today we are going to talk about how to build production ready and scalable forms in react using react hooks i have a basic login form and here's the code it is a simple index.js file with a form component called app and i'm using the use state react hook to save the email and the password and on the input for the email i am listening to the unchanged event and setting the email using event.target.value doing exactly the same thing for the password now if i visit the form and type in my information and hit login i have the data logged which means that the purpose of the form is met because i can get the data and make an api request or whatever i want now what is the problem with this approach if i go to my function and just before the return i'm going to add a console.log that says i am rendering and if i type you can see i am rendering keeps logging to the console and on every keystroke we have a render okay now this is almost okay when your application is just one login form and just two input boxes but by the time you begin to add more and more components to your application the performance of your application begins to reduce and sometimes when you have a long form the user would begin to experience jacks when typing and this is really not good i want to show you the way you should develop production ready forms that are going to scale no matter the size of your application we'll be using a package called react hook form yarn add react hook form now once that package is done installing we can import it at the top and i'm going to clean our implementation of state so i'm just going to remove this and this and this too then i am going to call the use form and this is going to give me a bunch of data the first thing it's going to give me is the register function now this register function is a function that we can use to tell the use form hook which inputs we have in our form so we would come to the input and would give this a ref of register we do exactly the same thing with password the ref is going to be register and if you've already noticed this use form behind the scenes uses the power of refs to identify the form elements and extract values from them now let's go back to the input refresh and of course we have i am rendering the first time because the component renders now if we try to type we do not have any logs in the console that's because we are cooks form is not rendering the application on every keystroke and that's really amazing now how do we extract values from the form when we want to submit if we visit the component you would realize we have an unsubmit now we are cooks form gives us a handle submit and we are supposed to call handle submit and pass in our own unsubmit as a callback and to the unsubmit we are going to receive the data from the form that way we can console.log data so the handle submit we pass it to the form it's going to extract the values from the form and then call our own callback right here which is with data and now if we refresh try to pass in our information there is no render pass in the password and click on login and now we have our data from the form so we have the exact same functionality but right now there is no unnecessary re-render and the form is going to do just fine even if we have 30 elements on the page okay so we've learned how to extract data first we use the register hook and register a ref to the input elements and then react hook form is going to use the names to uniquely identify what these input elements are for example if you check the logs you see the key is email and the value is what we typed the key is password and the value is password that's because of the names on the input and you do not want to forget this is really important so the name is email and the name here is password and that's what the key of our data is now what if we were interested in making some of the fields required we could call the password field right here and pass in required true and it's also possible to pass in some other validations like min length max length or a regular expression to match how the field should be now once we pass that we can also get errors from use form and this is going to give us any validation errors that we have now let's go ahead and try to type that again so if we have badcoder at gmail.com and if we pass in password then everything works fine 
we have the log but what if we do not pass in the password when i click on login notice that it focuses on the password and there is no form data printed which means it doesn't submit and that's really great because the validation is working and it automatically knows that it should refocus on the element that has some validation errors now let's also make the email required by calling the register and saying required should be true if we visit the form let's not put in anything and it would intelligently focus on the email so look at that it would intelligently focus on the first input with validation errors now what if we wanted to display the validation errors in the browser first we would come to our component and get the errors from use form then we would render the invalid feedback div right here conditionally so would say errors dot email then we would render this else null and in here would say the email is required we would do exactly the same thing for the password so under here we're going to replace all of this and we'll change this to password now if we want to see the errors with bootstrap then we would have to change the class name so here we're going to say the class form control would be here and if errors dot password then we would add the is invalid class else would render an empty string and would also do the same thing for the email and this would be errors dot email okay so now we visit the browser and if we click this we have the email is required the password is required and that's really good now i'm going to add a console.log here so we see the errors and what it contains so i'll refresh this click on this and now we have email and password and notice that the type is required provided in that error object and that's really good so that we can conditionally display this message only in the case of the required type okay so we've covered a lot we've covered so much but that's not the end of it there's asynchronous validation there's making the actual api request the loading state and all that i'm really glad i could introduce this to you please go ahead and try it out take some time to visit the website and consider using it for your next project